DeMeso, his first 64 gigabyte before he did the um, the 200 and the 128, which is actually a, fair, a newer release than this. But I thought I'd give this one a shot just because I want to see kind of the evolution. And I know this one's out in the wild and just see whether it's still worth a download or not. It has some cool custom themes and a lot of scripts pre-installed. Um, with a Supreme Team base. But if you're looking for a good Raspberry Pi for base image, it's actually not too bad. Um, so what we're gonna do in this video is share with you the pros and the cons of this one, play some games, and just overall check it out. There's also been quite a few questions that I'd like to answer, so let's jump into it. So on first boot, you will type in your controls and you should see a screen similar to mine. This is based on the Wear Dirty Gaming's older Raspberry Pi for base image. They now have like a new lighter version all up to date. This is running like a seven week old version of RetroPie. So for example, the Dreamcast is not running Redream, it's running Rycast, which some people might prefer that. It's probably some people won't, but you can easily update this image to do that. But this is a 64 gigabyte image. A lot of people wanted that smaller size and most other images out there are 200, 400, 512. So starting off in options though, it does have all the great scripts that you'd wanna see here. Um, something I really like about it is that it has really cool launching screens where it shows you the system you're about to launch and then it shows you some box art of the game. Um, this does also have bezels turned on. There are little issues with the um, with the uh, portable games that the bezels don't quite fit. The aspect ratios aren't quite hooked up properly depending on the type of display you're using. I actually read quite a few comments about that. So you might have to change the aspect ratios in RetroArch. Um, yeah, I do have Hersey themes, so you can just connect this to the internet and easily download additional themes. Um, and then there is background music on that I turned off. If you hit select, you go to his little screensaver here. You can easily add your own as well. It's very easy to do. Just really quick off the bat, I want to show you those loading screens. And um, so, as I mentioned, it's a little older of an image, but it works good. It works really well. Oh, so there you go. So PlayStation, see that? That's pretty cool. So you get the the loading video and the box art on some of them. So as I mentioned, the only really big issue with this image is um, that it's missing those, uh, a couple aspect ratio things. Other than that, fundamentally, I didn't mean to click into that, but fundamentally, the, um, the core of this is solid. So we'll go through the games now. Um, if just off first glance, though, you notice that there's collections for like wrestling. There's collections for Street Fighter, wrestling, Street Fighter, uh, Mortal Kombat and Batman. You know, a lot of that is what he really likes, so he put a lot of that in there. But as you see, there's lots of consoles. Something that's missing though is Nintendo 64. There is no Nintendo 64 on this image. So let's go through your Sega Genesis, and some of these are hacks. There are a nice bit of hacks in here 740, Neo Geo 141, NES 1000. Again, some hacks in there. PC Engine 164, PSP. 13 games. Those are your 13. PlayStation 24. These are going to be your 24 games. Um, option menu we saw, Sega 32X30, Sega CD 25, these are going to be your 25 on there. SG-1000, 64, Super Nintendo 900, quite a few hacks in there as well. Virtual Boy 18, Batman that's a collection, Family Computer System um, 120, Sega Genesis hacks only 31, Mortal Kombat's a collection, Nintendo hacks 101, uh, PC Engine CD-ROM 20 games, Super Famicom 124, hacks, collections, Super Graphics 5, and then all games. It's rocking 7,347 7, games. As far as the image size, it's 58.3 gigabytes. It's going to be 62,622,000,000 bytes. bytes. Um, please put it on a Sandus Ultra or a Samsung, either the Plus or the Evo Select. Don't cheap out on SD cards. If you're going to go with like a PNY, go with the Elite series. Um, don't cheap out, especially at 64. If you want to throw this on a 125 or 200 and then add your own ROMs to it, please feel free. If I were you though and I was building an image from scratch at this point in time, I'd probably start with a newer base image, either the V-Man image or the newer Word Dirty Gamings, uh, which I think they call it like the light, L-I-T-E is what you want to start with. Arcade Classics, 800 arcade games. that has all your favorite games on it. JoJo's, your Street Fighters, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park. No Jurassic World, just Jurassic Park. Um, Clax, Tetris, all that good stuff. 
Atari 2600, you got 505. Atari 7800, 60. Atari Lynx, 85. Coleco, 140. Dreamcast, you got 14 here. And like I said, most of these are running on Ryecast. Um, Family Computer, Disk System, 144. Game Boy, Game Gear, 248. Game Boy, 505. Game Boy Advance, 994. So pretty much all the portables. And then Sega Master System, 268. And I think we've already done all of these. So that's what you have on the image. And those are my thoughts. I mean, it's a fine image. It'll work just fine. You can add some additional themes. It is running the Raspberry Pi 4. You can overclock this thing really easily. And uh, it'll play these Dreamcast and PSP games pretty well where the Raspberry Pi struggled. PlayStation, for the most part, that was fine with the Raspberry Pi 3B. But now you got a little bit of extra oomph behind you and it's good. Like I said in my previous videos, the biggest thing to me with the Raspberry Pi 4 as well is also your experience here in the menus. It's so much faster clicking around. Before there's slight lag, there's a little delays. And until you play with something that's really fast or faster than a Raspberry Pi 3, you don't really know what you're missing out on. But when you finally do get to try it, you can really start seeing the difference. So there's a 64, I think there's a lot of room for you know, other images to be out there. But like I said, there's a two 200s in a previous video. There's two 200s. There's the 512 gigabyte out there in the wild. Those are by far superior to this. This one is old, but I just wanted to have a look at it and see people's complaints and things that they had issues with. Like I said, with the portables, that's how you fix it with the aspect ratio. I'll go ahead and play some games. I try to play different games in every video. So maybe there's some games I'll play in this video that you haven't seen me play in the, pa in the past. But that's what I think for this particular image.
So in conclusion, you saw the gameplay. It's running great. Controls were not an issue whatsoever. Those aspect ratio issues were really my biggest concern. And at a 64 gigabyte, you actually have to make a lot of really big decisions because you can't just throw everything on this, especially when it comes to CD-based games like PlayStation, PSP, uh, and you Dreamcast. Just way, way big games, even if you get them all uh, zipped up. Now, um, overall, I'll give this image, uh, I mean, if, if I was to review this image back in October, I wasn't really making videos at the time, I probably would have given it an A because it was one of the first Raspberry Pi 4 images out there. But because it hasn't aged very well, as most things don't, uh, unless you're a fine, fine wine, um, you know, it's just there's so many better images out there now. That, and Demeso himself has a nicer image out there now. So um, I would definitely go with the newer ones. And if you're buying, if you're spending eighty dollars or whatever it is on a Raspberry Pi four, you can afford a two hundred gigabyte SD card. So I don't get the thing about oh well, you have to buy a big SD card. Um, you know, we're talking about Raspberry Pi four here, not a Raspberry Pi three or zero. So, anyways, I'd give it like a B now. But um, really cool to see, and um, you know, the Raspberry Pi four took a really long time to get to where we are now. I mean. I want to say it's, I forget when the Raspberry Pi 4 released, but I know we're getting coming up on a year, maybe more. I don't know. Maybe I'm, time just flies sometimes. And um, so where we are now, we've gone leaps. And so that's what I think about this one. If you just got a little 64 gigabyte SD card hanging around, uh, go for it. Otherwise, I would probably build my own because 64, you really got to, you know, like I said, you have to pick and choose what you want to put on there. Like, I, I would have liked to see some Nintendo 64 on here myself. But again, that's a personal preference, and I'm not going to take anything away from the grade. The grade, why I gave it one less was just because there is a newer base image out there, and there was a few couple issues that I had to fix on my own. Um, and that was pretty much my main beefs with it. And those are very small. So with all that said, that's what I think. Let me know what y'all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.